good evening. It's such an inspiring thing for me. I, who struggle to do stick figures on a blackboard in priesthood leadership meetings, <laughs> to come here and be associated with those of you who are truly artists, and to see your wonderful works. I thought tonight, as Kurt asked those of you who are artists to stand, under what description or what category of human being I could stand. <laughs> I'm not an athlete, I'm not a musician, I'm not an artist. I'm just a poor preacher. <laughs> and so it fills me actually with um, awe and having a chance to meet you tonight and recognizing the youthfulness of many of the award-winning artists tonight is such an expression, I think, of the bright future that we have for art in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I, I want to just, as has been done, personally thank each one of the some 1,155 of you who took the time and put your hearts and souls into this work. I know for me, the creative process, even in crafting something as simple as a talk, is so agonizing sometimes, so difficult, so challenging, such labor. Now it may just flow out of you, I don't know, but I just have great respect and want to express that respect and that appreciation to each one of you who have done something and ended it. And I thank those that have made it possible for this to happen. Think about the harvest that's taken place from over 40 nations of the world. And I would wager in the years to come that we'll be getting art from all 190 nations where the church has a presence today. It's wonderful to be the focal point for such a creative effort and to have that reside within the Church History Department and especially within the Church History Museum. I hope you can sense tonight the excellence of the people, starting with Brother Graham, our director, who help administer our museum enterprise and who bring their gifts to bear to help your gifts come to fruition. I just feel that they're of the highest caliber, just as your art tonight is of the highest caliber. And I thank each one of them who have contributed and made possible such a tremendous showing and harvest of art from all across the world. We want to assure you that however we can make use of what you have done within the limits of intellectual property law, we will do that. Mm -hmm. And we will have this art displayed and made available on the internet, make its appearance in church magazines. Some of it will be posted here on the church campus at headquarters. But to the greatest extent possible, we want to bless as many lives as we can with your productive offerings. And again, we thank you for making that possible. I have been in and out of church history now for about the last 17 years, and I think this is the fourth, maybe, or fifth of these annual art competition award meetings that I've been able to attend. And I'm thrilled tonight to be able to announce that for the 10th international art competition, which will coincide with the New Testament um, part of our church curriculum in the year 2015, which sounds like a long way off, but it'll come in the snap of a finger. The, the theme around which the artistic uh, endeavors will revolve that year is very simple. It's one that we learned in nursery, if not in nursery, certainly in primary, and it's entitled, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. That opens up, I think, tremendous vistas and will underscore and support what we'll be learning that year with the New Testament being our course of study. But I'm sure that doesn't rule out the Book of Mormon, which contains his stories as well. Now, just in conclusion, uh, I'd like to just say this on a more spiritual note. There are lots of ways, I think, that we can glorify our Heavenly Father. <coughs> And that ultimately, I think, should be the end of all of what we try to do in this life. And we do it best, I think, through the lives we live, the purity, the holiness that we're able to attain in the course of our lives. But on that path, 
toward Christian discipleship and becoming more like our Heavenly Father. There are so many things that help us in that endeavor. I always think of all of the tremendous evidences there are of God's love for us in trying to help us within the limits of agency, realizing that we have to want it, we have to will it, in order for it to become a part of us and to be become what we really in the end are. But along the way, there are lots of things to motivate and to help. And among all of those, brothers and sisters, I think one of the greatest things we have are the arts. Inspiring music, inspiring art, inspiring literature. You who are artists, in the finest sense of that word, make a substantial contribution to God's work. You do help us see his wonderful works. You will tell us stories of Jesus. And in that process, we'll all become better people. But in addition, it will make life so much richer, so much more enjoyable for all of us, whether it's at the museum or in our home or wherever we encounter the product of your talented and blessed hands and minds. So I offer our institutional thanks to all of you tonight and congratulations to every single one whether you're an award winner or not. And if it's any consolation at all, I don't know that I have ever won an award. Uh, maybe I did. Maybe in the first grade I got an award for handwriting or something. But it's long forgotten. And I just want all of you to feel like your participation in this has added to the wonderful whole that we've achieved out of this competition this year. I know that we belong to the Church of Jesus Christ. I know that his greatest desire is for all of us to maximize our potential as his children. And that's in every way that we can. And certainly artistically, I think, is something that pleases him as much as it pleases our earthly eyes. And I say this tonight with gratitude to all of you and with an expression of my personal joy for this good that's being done and for the way that it's being done under the leadership of our museum staff. And I do this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.